So then redux. So in this diagram, we have redux in the center right here, a central data store. And that is a JavaScript object, which will represent our global state of the application. Now, this reducer right here is a function that interacts with the store in order to change the state of it or the data inside of it. So you could think of the store as a warehouse storing the state or the data of your application. And you can think of the reducer here as a robot which stands guard at the door of the warehouse. And only the robot can go inside the warehouse and edit the state of the store. So when actions are dispatched from elsewhere in the application, this robot receives them and then uses those actions to update the state inside the store, the warehouse. And the state is always then being updated from one single place, the robot or the reducer, right? Now actions are handed to the reducer and the reducer makes those changes to the store depending on which action it's been passed. So the reducer function and the store are tightly coupled with each other so that when we create a store, we have to pass that store a single reducer function as a parameter to that store. So that way the store knows which reducer is going to handle those changes. So let's start by creating a simple store. Now we'll be using CodePen to quickly illustrate the basics of Redux over the next couple of lessons or so, and then we'll implement it properly into the project that we've been creating so far. All right then, so here I am inside CodePen, and if you wanna follow along and work along with me inside your own CodePen, all you need to make sure of is that you have this thing right here, this library hooked up to your CodePen. It's the Redux library because we're gonna need that over here in a minute. And because we've hooked that up, it means we can get access to the Redux library in here by just saying Redux. That is the Redux library, all right? So what I want to do is get something from the Redux library. We need to create a store. So I want to get something from Redux that is gonna enable us to create that store. So I'm gonna create a constant first of all, and we're gonna use destructuring here, and I'm gonna grab create store, and this is gonna be from Redux. Okay, so we're just grabbing this thing from the Redux library right here and we're storing it. Okay then, so now we have that, we want to go ahead and actually create a store and it's very simple to do. We just say const store is equal to create store, which we just grabbed at the top up here. And then we invoke that function because this is a function. Now, remember back to the diagram, we said that the store is tightly coupled with a reducer and we pass a reducer into the store as a parameter so that we know that those two are linked together and the store knows which reducer is going to be interacting with it. So we need to pass a reducer through here. We'll call this my reducer and up here we'll create that reducer. So a reducer is just a function that interacts with the store. So let's create that function and we've called it my reducer like so and this function inside is going to take two parameters right here in here this is where we do the interacting with the actual store to change the state but right in here we take two parameters we take the state and we take the action as well so right now let's just type state and action like so so the state is the state of the store. Now, when the reducer first interacts with the store, it's not gonna know the state then, it's not gonna exist. So we have to create an initial state to begin with for the store. And then when it first starts, it passes that initial state into the store via this reducer and it can set it as that, okay? So let us create this initial state up here first of all, const init state and set it equal to some kind of object. So we'll just say the to do's is going to be an empty array to begin with. And also the posts is going to be an empty array to begin with just some dummy data. We might fill this in in a bit. So to pass a default state into this thing right here, we can say the state is equal to the init state. So the first time that this reducer fires, then it's going to say, well, hang on. We don't have a state here that you're passing me. So I use the initial state as a default value for the state. So then we can pass that in, okay? So we have now our reducer function 
and we've passed that into the create store method. So this creates the store and this is the reducer that's going to interact with it. Now it might not make much sense at the minute, but as we go through the next few lessons, it's all going to click into place and we're going to start to look at actions in the next video.